This is volume 2 of Troubleshooting Beginner Problems in ZBrush. So let's get right into it. So let's say you were sculpting and you decide to tinker with some of the brush settings and you get to a point where your brush no longer resembles the original brush settings and you want to revert back to the original. All you have to do is head on over to the brush menu and scroll all the way to the bottom and you have two options here. Reset current brush or reset all brushes. Now I've just made changes to the standard brush here so I'm just going to go ahead and hit reset current brush. Once I do so you can see that my brush has reverted back to its original settings. Now the next thing I want to address is rendering so I'm just going to go ahead and open up this Rhino model here. So to render your model all you have to do is hit the BPR button here and that's going to go ahead and render your model. In order to save your render out, you need to open up the render panel here and search for BPR render pass. Now I'm just going to go ahead and expand this. Now you can see that we have different passes here. Now the first one here is a composite of your model here and the rest are individual passes. So you can go ahead and choose to export these out by simply clicking on them and it's going to save it out as a PSD file. The next thing I want to talk about is normals. So how do we determine our normals are facing in the right direction? In order to do so, we need to scroll all the way to the bottom and hit display properties. Now you can see that we have double active and if I turn that off, you can immediately see that something went wrong with this model. And the reason for this result is because our normals have flipped. And in order to flip our normals back into the right direction, all we have to do is hit the flip button. Now, whenever you import a model into ZBrush in order to sculpt high frequency detail, it is good practice to make sure double is turned off in order to check whether or not your normals are facing in the right direction. Now, while sculpting, you might run into this problem where you accidentally mess up your canvas settings and in order to rectify this all you have to do is come on over to this button which says actual size and click on that in order to revert your canvas settings back to normal. Now the next thing I want to get into is boolean operations and this is something that really trips up beginners. So let's just go ahead and pull up this sphere here and I'm just going to make sure that's my active mesh and I'm also going to bring in this cylinder. So let's just collapse this. Now in order to perform a boolean operation, you need to make sure that the mesh above has DynaMesh active. So come on over to geometry and just check that and make sure you have DynaMesh active, otherwise this is not going to work. So you can see that we have this tiny little icon here and so Right now it's set to union. So if I were to come to this merge option here and say merge down, hit OK. And I'm going to just dynamish this. You can see that these two are now merged into one object. And let's just come on over to the deformation tab and hit polish. And now you can clearly see that these two have been blended into one object. Now let's try another one. This time let's try to punch a hole into this sphere. So I'm just going to bring up another cylinder here and let's just hit um, this icon here next to it and that's the difference option and I'm going to hit live boolean and that's going to give us a picture of what's going to happen when we go ahead and merge this down and dynamesh. So now I'm just going to turn that off for the moment and repeat the process. Just hit merge down, say OK, Dynamesh, and it's now gone ahead and cut a hole into our mesh. Now we can do the same thing for intersecting our mesh. And let's just undo this. And now let's hit Live Boolean with the intersect active. And you can see that it gives us this result. So if I go ahead and hit merge down, say OK, and I dynamish, we actually don't get that result. And I'm actually not sure why this happens. But let's go ahead and append another cylinder. And let me show you how to basically perform this properly. So I'm just going to scale that down and bring that all the way up. 
and let's just do something like so and set this to intersection and if we look at this this is the result we should get now we can't merge it down because we're not going to get the right result instead of that open up the boolean tab here and make sure you're on the one about and you have dynamesh active so just make sure that dynamesh is active once you do that hit live boolean and then say make boolean mesh now once you make boolean mesh it's going to create that as a new tool there and you can now bring that into this by just appending it and hitting that and now you've got this in your sub tool list and you can now do as you see fit with this so it's just going to turn off that if i turn these off you can see that we have this intersected mesh now the next thing i want to talk about is z spheres and let me just bring one in here and make this the active tool and let me just start drawing on top of this now once i do that i'm going to come to adapter skin and hit review and let's say i'm happy with that i'm going to go ahead and hit make adaptive skin now you never want to sculpt on top of this because this is actually a preview mesh your actual mesh is right here in the tool palette it says skin underscore zsphere one and that's your actual mesh so go ahead and append that from the tool palette and hide the preview mesh and actually work on this one so the final thing i want to talk about is poly painting so I'm just going to bring up a sphere here and let me just hide this and make the sphere our active mesh. Now let's just go ahead and make sure our GB is active and we turn Z add off. And I'm also going to turn our cylinder on here and make sure that the sphere here is the, is the active mesh. So let's just pick a color and start to paint on top of this mesh. Now, let's say I wanted to paint on top of this with the matcap gray and I want to maintain this matcap gray for this sphere here. And let's just switch over to the cylinder and I want to make it some other material like let's say chalk. But you see that both the objects here changed material, but I actually wanted to preserve the material for this one. Now, in order to preserve the material, what you need to do is you need to actually switch from RGB channel to MRGB and then select the mesh you want to assign the material to and in this case let's say matcap gray and let's come on over to color and hit full object now our material has been assigned so if we switch over to another material here and i change it you can see that the sphere basically preserved that material that we assigned to it and now we can go ahead and change whatever material we want and continue to paint with a different material and color so that brings us to the end of this video so if you're a beginner i've got a free multi-part course here on my youtube channel so i would recommend you checking that out if you want to learn the basics of zbrush and get into sculpting and if you have any doubts, just leave it in the comments below. And if I get enough comments, I'll probably make another volume of this. So I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.